Okay. So what, what's happening here? Okay. So there's there's half a liter of, of nutrients and algae in there. So we've got controlled light coming from the top, and these two things here are called peltiers. So they control the temperature. Okay. They control the temperature, and so what we can do is we, we ramp the temperature up in the middle of the day, and then we drop it at night time. The lights come on, the lights turn on like you've got sunrise, you've reached midday, and so we simulate the, 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 the light climate, the temperature of anywhere around the globe. And so this is what an algal biofuel facility would be, you know, in, in Karatha or, or in the back of Sydney. And so the entire climate is controlled. We're bubbling in oxygen at the moment, but we can bubble in CO2. We've got sensors in there measuring the pH, uh, the, the amount of oxygen produced and we measure down the bottom here the, the colour of the water. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a contained environment. Yep. Is it true that this that Australia could be the Saudi Arabia of the future? Totally. With the amount of sunlight that we've got and the lack of rainfall, uh, once these are run as ponds, we could be running these, these out here all over northern Australia. Uh, we've, got sun, we've got the right temperature, the right climate, and it's the important thing is the lack of rainfall. So rainfall dilutes them. Ah. So you don't want you don't want rainfall. So right. you want high temperature, high light, and no rainfall. So and essentially a desert. And the other advantage is that it um, it's not taking up fresh precious water. fresh water. Exactly. So this is salt water. Um, so you just pump salt water into it, throw the nutrients, throw the algae, and yeah, yeah. there'll be other algae that will invade it. But the thing is, if we have the right type of algae that will outcompete the invading, the natural algae that's out there. So at the moment you're testing a particular type of algae, is that the yes. nanochloropsis? nanochloropsis. So mm -hmm. it's a, a, an algae that yields lots and lots of lipid which can be turned into fuel. Yep. So. so the water that um, will be used, for example, in Darwin, if Darwin is, proves to be a suitable site, would that be seawater or Just existing? Just straight seawater. Seawater. So does that mean you have to bring in seawater? Yeah, you put it on the coast. So you'll, ah, you'll so make it's just there. you'll make a, a, a shallow, half a meter deep, uh, hectare-sized pond. Yep. Pump the water from from the near coastal ocean in, and then use that. Yep. So it's it's much easier just to use coastal water. Yep. Some of these you could use wastewater with high nitrogen and phosphorus levels, but. It's a little bit more complex. What about the artesian basin type water? Is there any use for that? Yeah, you should keep it in the ground and you should use it for, for agriculture, not for this. Right. Use seawater. Because these are the sort of questions that people ask. Yeah, no, no. Artesian, artesian water is too precious. There's not enough of it, it's not recharged quickly enough. Yeah. And for the agriculture that happens in those areas, they need that precious water. It shouldn't be used for anything else. Um, yeah, not yeah. for this. So I understand that. The whole concept of biofuel has got a bad name recently. Why, why is that? Not this, not this Which technology. Oh, oh, yes. it's oh okay, like biofuels. Corn easy. and stuff like yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, totally. So this is this is second generation. First generation biofuels is growing corn, maize, soy, and taking crop plants and then turning them into ethanol. This is second generation biofuels. So this is this is not competing with with food um, or, or arid land to make the biofuels. So much smaller area, salt water, and we currently don't eat algae. No. So. Okay, so is this the most sustainable energy source um, yeah. that we know of at this point? It, it, it fixes carbon dioxide, so it's a way of stripping carbon dioxide out of the, out of the atmosphere. It's putting the carbon into an, a high energy uh, liquid that can be used for, for combustion engines and so it's a it's a neutral so what fuel. happens when you say you put this in your car this new type fuel yep. does that when you drive your car does that emit any it emits CO2? the same amount of co2 but you've already fixed all the co2 when you grew it oh. so the pump this line of, of, of air yep. has got co2 in it if we put a pure co2 or a 20% CO2 into it, the algae would grow much, much quicker. So, so we're stripping the CO2 out of the atmosphere, putting it into the fuel, burning the fuel, and then putting the CO2 back. So, so it's, it's, it's cost neutral. neutral. Yeah. It's, not, if, it's not sequestering and removing the CO2, no. 
it's putting into the fuel and then we reburn it. When you say cost neutral, you mean cost to the environment? Cost to the, the carbon budget. Yes. Yeah. That's great. Thank yeah. you. Good.